Okay, so I can honestly say that my favorite part of this entire chapter, or my favorite thing about this entire week's chapter, is the fact that this chapter managed to surprise me so much. I mean, seriously, from the very beginning of the chapter to the very end of it, I can honestly say that I did not predict any of this going down. And, you know, I can kind of say that about the rest of the arc in general. I didn't really see a lot of what happened in this arc, especially these last few, like, 16 or so chapters where we got introduced to the demon. I didn't see a lot of that happening, and I didn't predict a lot of it. But at the same time, I could still predict a lot of the events that would happen as they unfolded. Like, uh, I could predict the fact that Yami, Yuno, and Asta would be the ones to land the final hits on the demon, just because of the fact that they foreshadowed so much of it. But with this chapter, there's so much that happened that they didn't foreshadow, that completely caught me off guard. And I'm actually more excited about it. I, I Even though pretty much a lot of the things that I predicted for certain characters ended up being wrong, I'm actually very happy about it now because of the fact that it managed to surprise me in such a way that has me excited to see where these surprises are going to go in the future. Okay, hey, what's up, guys? We have an amazing chapter of Black Clover out, chapter 214. I'm sorry this video is coming out so late. I ended up having to work this morning, so I'm just now getting off when I'm recording this video. It's probably going to end up going up about like an hour after I finish recording it. But anyway, this chapter was just so amazing. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, just a whole bunch of surprises that I didn't see coming. Uh, I guess I should start with the, like the thing that surprised me the least, but at the same time completely caught me off guard. Was the fact that Asta actually was able to figure out who Sekri was. Which, honestly... It wasn't that surprising because of the fact that it's Asta, he has his ability to sense Key and other people. And, you know, he spent enough time with Sekrei at this point that he should have been able to f figure out that basically, hey, this girl who's all close with the ma first Magic Emperor has the same key as, you know, Nero, my pet bird. So it doesn't make, it makes a lot of sense that he actually would be able to pick up on the fact that, you know, they are the same person. Especially since the two have very similar personalities, so he obviously would have been able to pick up on that. But still, it caught me off guard the fact that Asta, of all characters, was the first one to pick up on who she actually was. Now, what's interesting about the scene is the fact that this is actually happening during the scene where we all predicted it was going to happen. The first Magic Emperor's body's falling apart. He's going to pass on just like everyone else did. Which, I honestly still say this scene should have happened in the last week's chapter. In fact, a scene that we got earlier on in the chapter, I also think should have happened last week. But I'll get to that in a second. So we get to see where the two of them, like Sekrei and uh, the first Magic Emperor uh, Lumiere, are saying their goodbyes. Now Sekrei actually doesn't want to leave him. She actually wants to go to the afterlife with him because she's just so attached to him. But Lumiere actually turns her down. He tells her to basically not let him hold her back from basically succeeding in anything she wants to go forward with. He even tells her to basically just stick around and actually be his eyes and ears, kind of be the one to protect the future in his place with this new generation and he even acknowledges in this chapter like i said we would get a scene between him and asta where he acknowledges the fact that asta and you know how are the ones who are inheriting his ideals his like goal of creating a world where everyone is cre treated equally so he basically gives her the goal or gives her the mission of going forward and watching over these two as they grow and see basically how they achieve that goal also i just want to quickly point out that right before lumiere actually does end up passing on he looks at Mimosa and Noel and basically says that he can't believe he actually got to meet two of his descendants in this, cha in this chapter. And that actually kind of caught me off guard because it didn't click in my head up until this point. That yeah, because the fact that the two of them actually are royalty, that means they should be, unless Lumiere's family had lost the throne and actually a different family had come in at some point. Because of the fact that they are royalty, unless someone other family took over in between when Lumiere died to present day they would be related to him. Now, I'm not sure if this was a translation error and the fact that he said that they're his descendants, because usually descendants means that they are, like, his great, 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 however many great grandchildren. Okay, so in the very beginning of the chapter, and this actually caught me completely off guard, I did not see this coming at all, we see, basically, the chapter literally starts off with Rade's realizing, hey, wait, I was an ally to this guy for a long time, and he's actually passing on. I can actually bring him back to life, and he actually uses his ability, his resurrection ability that he just got in the very beginning of this arc, and he uses it to re to resurrect Patry in Lick's uh, artificial body. So now Patry is officially back, we actually get a touching scene between him and uh, William Vengeance, right before William Vengeance and Yami actually go off to find uh, Julius's body, so that he can have, you know, his final goodbyes to him and try to, like, uh, try to apologize for his part in his death. And this completely caught me off guard because I honestly thought that 
the way we said goodbye to Patry in the previous chapter meant that we were done with him. That meant that we weren't going to see him again at any point. But the fact that we start this chapter and we actually bring him back right away, I don't know. Like I, I like the surprise, but I, like I said earlier in the video, I feel like this is a moment that we should have got in the last chapter. Like we should, we should at least edit off the last chapter on Rade's looking at his grimoire right after Patry basically ascended to heaven. Basically, we should have seen him, you know, activating the spell in the last chapter, and then possibly start off the chapter with Patry actually officially coming back to life in uh, which is. Um, artificial body but we should have at least gotten a hint to this at the end of last chapter because it, it i don't know it just, it, even though i like the idea of patrick coming back i feel like the reveal of him being resurrected in the very beginning of the chapter feels off it should if it would have been placed in like the middle of the chapter or at the end of the chapter i think it would have been better but placing it in the very beginning of the chapter makes it feel a little off I don't, I don't know. It just It's just something about it doesn't sit right with me. Also, I like how Rade and Valtos, after they bring Patrick back to life, just kind of bounce out. But yeah, the two of them end up leaving, and I just now realized this going through the chapter again in my head, and they didn't take Sally with them. Their Sally is still hanging out with the rest of the Black Bulls right now. So that actually makes me think that she actually is officially now joining the Black Bulls. Like, maybe my prediction earlier on in ARC, where we saw her interacting with Asta and the rest of the Black Bulls and seeing her connection to them. Maybe she actually will end up joining them officially, which actually would be pretty cool because that means that we would kind of have gotten four new members of the Black Bulls throughout this entire arc. I'm going to count uh, Zora joining, even though he's technically joined right before the arc started. I'm going to count him joining, even though he was officially a member already. Henry, like I said, another official member, but we didn't find out about him until this arc. Uh, I'm going to assume as long as uh, Sekiro doesn't end up going back into her bird form. If she's sticking around, she's going to be becoming a member of the Black Bulls officially. And if Sally joins, that's the fourth new member. So the Black Bulls group is just kind of growing at this point. I'm actually excited to see what kind of adventures this new group will end up getting into in the future. Okay, and then we got the most exciting, most, you know, surprising reveal in the chapter. So when Yami and uh, William decide to head off to Joyce's body, so basically, so Joyce, so, uh, yeah, no, what's his name? Uh, William. So William can say his final goodbyes and pay respects to his, you know, mentor. They end up seeing that the place where Yami buried Julius is actually empty. And when they turn around, they see a newly revived Julius looking really fucking young. Like he looks like he's probably in his 20s by the picture in this chapter. So basically the reason he ended up giving is the fact that right before, actually no, for 13 years, he's actually had a spell activated. That upon his death, and he didn't know that this actually would work, but upon his death, it would rewind time for him. Basically rewind his body to a point previously, I'm assuming to the point where he activated that spell 13 years ago. Now, I'm not exactly sure on that because when we saw Julius before, he looked like he was probably in his, uh, you know, probably in his like 50s. And when we see him in the chapter, he looks like he could be very early 20s, so I'm not sure. But hey, that means Julius is back now, which means we don't need a new Magic Emperor anymore. So all those theories of who's going to become the next one kind of gets thrown out the window. Uh, but yeah, I actually had to run, so this is it for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts and theories. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.